Today, I'm going to start by explaining you how to integrate distance grabbing functionality using our Oculus Quest. And finally, I'm going to explain you how the users can easily detect which objects they can interact with or not. So let's jump right in. Perfect. So the first thing that we're going to do is to configure our project so it works correctly with our Oculus Quest. If you know how to do this, probably there's a link in the video in the top where I'll show you how to do this process. But if you have done that already, you are good to go. The very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to define our environment. This is, you know, there's nothing here that we could interact with possibly. So let's go ahead and let's define a specific environment. And the one that we're going to work with today, it's going to be more like an office type of environment. So let's, some, let's quickly find something available in the asset store. And, and I'm going to type office pack. As usually, I like to find the free assets. And if you find one that is called low poly office pack, that's a good example that we're going to work with. If you haven't downloaded it, go ahead and download it. And if you have downloaded it, go ahead and import all of those, all of the package. Perfect. And let's go back into our scene. Now to quickly create our environment, we're going to take a look at our imported object or our imported package, polygonal mine. Uh, let's go to the low poly office let's find the zines there's a great scenes but actually let's take a look at another zine that they have and it's called demo zine perfect so we're gonna double click on that we're gonna open that demo zine and good we're gonna be able to see the scene good something that is a little bit not appealing for us at the moment is that color that red color i i'm gonna change it right away i know it's not relevant to this video but i'm really gonna change that it's not that appealing for the user even if i will have even if it's a environment a virtual environment uh, it's not very appealing for us i'm gonna put it more like a change it to a more like a grayish whitish color and yeah that's way more better good so you might see that there are multiple cameras here within this scene. Let's find those cameras and let's remove all of them. So let's gonna find in the hierarchy section, let's gonna find all the cameras and select each of them and we're gonna remove, we're gonna delete all of them. Perfect. We're gonna clear out the, our filter. Now, the very first thing that we need to do here is to make sure to include our player controller. If you have seen one of my previous videos, you will know why this is important for us. This is what is gonna allow us to have our visibility or being able to be in our virtual world in Unity. So let's go ahead and let's find the OVR player controller. And it's gonna drag it into our scene. Good. This is the current location of the display and controller. I'm gonna change the location and let's go to this section. This left section, I think is the room A, yes. So let's make sure to go to the room A. And let's select one more time, the player controller. Put it somewhere where it is closer to different objects. Now, the main reason why I picked this section is because if you are not seeing a little bit more, there's this back, there's uh, this frame, this cup, this pen. There are things that look like potential things that we could actually interact with, as well as other things here in the shelf. If you have seen one of my videos where I explained to you how to grab objects in, in our Oculus Quest environment, the concept is pretty similar. There's going to be a grabber in our hands or in our controllers and there are going to be objects that are going to have that grabable uh, component. And finally, we're going to have our grab manager and the grab man manager, what it's going to allow us to do is to be able to define a range that our player is going to be able to interact with different objects. 
So in order for you to make more sense, let's gonna go ahead and open the player controller. The OVR camera rig, let's find the left hand anchor and the right hand anchor. And the very first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create or we're gonna find a prefab called distance grab grabable hand if I'm not wrong. Let's see. It's called distance grab grab hand left and distance grab hand right. And as you might know, the first thing that we're gonna do is to drag and drop it within our left hand anchor and our no, that's not the right one. And our right hand anchor for the right hand. Good. Now, if you notice quickly these prefabs, you will notice that it will have the distance grabber script, our first component that we need to have. Distance grabber is pretty much is similar to our OVR grabber script. And the only difference is probably gonna be the ability to grab object, objects from distance. If you see our distance grabber script, you're gonna see that there's controller and the controller is what is gonna allow us to detect or to trigger the grabbing functionality and also we're gonna see that there's a parent transform and player fields let's gonna go ahead and for our player transform find the right hand anchor and drag and drop it in that section similar case we're gonna do for the player let's gonna find the OVR player controller and let's drag it and drop it within that player section you are also gonna see this focus color, your cast radius, all of these elements. There's also an object pull velocity. And what that's gonna allow us to do is to determine how quickly the object can come or can, grab, can be grabbed to our hand controllers. Also, we're gonna have max grab distance. And what that's gonna allow us to do is basically we're gonna have a certain distance that we're gonna be able to grab different objects. So for example, if one of my objects that I'm wanting to interact with is, let's say five meters from here, from my current position, and then I set the max grab distance to two or three, then at the moment, I'm not gonna be able to actually grab that object. But if your object is closer to you to a distance lower than what the max grab distance I set it to, I'm gonna be able to grab that object. But that's one thing you gotta take into consideration another thing that we're gonna set up later. Good. So we're gonna include that same configuration to our distance grab hand left as well. But before we move forward, I notice in here in our hand script, the animator is not set up and usually it gets set up, but for some reason, I'm not seeing this already configured. So what we're gonna do is to configure it so our hands can have animation as well. So let's double click in the animator section and let's go find for our right hand, the R hands, the little, the rest. And let's gonna configure the distance ground hand left in a similar way. So let's go ahead and let's find the L hand, little, low rest. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly, so bear with me. And also let's go ahead and configure the parent transform and the player field. Perfect. So we already have one key component, the distance grabber, and it's already configured correctly. The other thing that we need to configure is to have to determine which, which of our objects we're gonna interact with. I wanna see what kind of objects I want to interact with. And, you know, I want to interact with this bag, this pants, all of these objects that I see here. But let's find each of them and let's include one other component that is needed for them, which is going to be the distance grabable. So let's click on this suitcase and let's find. So we we'll click it and then let's add one new component. That's going to include the distance grabable. Now, in order for this to work, your object needs to have physics. How do we apply physics? Well, if you don't know, we apply or we include a rigid body component. And if you would like to use gravity, well, in this case, I would like to actually leave, uh, I, would like to, uh, I would like to use gravity for my suitcase, so I'm gonna leave it as it is. 
you can change the mass if you want and i'm gonna change also the collision detection as well to continuous dynamic Cool, that's one part and make sure also that you have a collider. The collider is gonna allow us to do is to grab that object as well. So without the collider, that's not gonna work. So let's go ahead and for this suitcase, we're gonna find mesh collider. Good. And probably you're currently not seeing that in here. Let's see, let me move this a little bit up. Good. What I did is I added a mesh collider for this particular object. Let's just leave it as it is. And you know, let's test this. If we need to make an extra configuration, let's play. Yep, our object has some physics, so it's it's correctly falling. Now, in order to prevent that from falling, we need to give this other object the desk physics as well and apply some type of collider so our suitcase doesn't fall so let's find our table and to our table let's gonna include a rigid body as the very first thing and for this i don't want it to fall so i really don't want to use gravity uh let's gonna click on is kinematic so our pro our our position of our of our table stays in the same place good now let's test Now, also, we're going to include a mesh collider to our, to our table. Now, if we play this, our desk is still falling. And probably it's because I forgot to configure it correctly. If you go back to our suitcase and you click on that, that's going to find the mesh collider. And let's check the convex option. What that is going to allow us to do is to be able to collide with other mesh colliders as well. So in this case, it's working perfectly. We're going to do that in a similar fashion to other objects. Let's find this pen. And let's include our rigid body. Let's include as well mesh collider. Let's check on the convex option. And also, let's include our distance probable strip. Good. Do this in a similar fashion for our telephone, rigid body, mesh collider. Check on X. Perfect. And finally, distance probable. Good. Our frame. The body mesh collider X and distance bravo. Good. Finally, our cup. Let's select this cup. One more team. The body also mesh collider X and distance bravo. Good. Perfect. Now we configure our projects so they are grabbable. And so it applies, it has physics, so it correctly works with our distance grabbable script. We're almost there, guys. But if you remember, I mentioned at the beginning that we need distance grabbable, a distance grabber, and finally a grab manager. The grab manager is going to be located at the OVR player controller. So in the OVR player controller, right click, and we're going to create a new sphere. We're going to create a new sphere and you might be wondering why are we creating a sphere for this? Well, the very first thing is that really we don't really have to have the mesh render available to this filter. If you take a look at the inspector section of this sphere, I'm going to disable the mesh render. Perfect. Now there's no sphere whatsoever blocking my visibility or the visibility of the player controller why did i create a sphere as well if you notice we have a sphere collider that's one of the main reasons why we created sphere 
Now, the second thing that we need to do is we're gonna include a graph manager script. We have that graph manager script. Now, remember that this sphere has a sphere collider. Our sphere collider is gonna work with our graph manager and it's gonna allow us to detect what's the maximum range that I'm gonna be able to detect objects that I can interact with. So for example, if you take a look at this, the sphere collider in the scene, we're gonna quickly notice that the distance that our, our player is gonna be able to interact with different objects is gonna be, is gonna be that sphere. So in order to interact with all other objects from the distance, we need to increase the radius of our sphere. You can do it in two different ways. You can either increase the scale of the, of the sphere, or you can just inc increase the radius of the sphere collider. So in this case, I'm gonna set it to three. Yeah, I know it's, it looks quite big, but remember it needs to be higher than the distance or the max variable distance that we set in our left or right hand controllers. If you take a look at the distance graph hand left, remember we set that to two. So make sure that your sphere, and in fact, let's change this because it's not a proper name. We're gonna change it to a graph manager range. Let's call it like that. Because it's defining what's the range that we can interact or we can grab objects perfect so we have almost everything but let's go ahead and select the grab manager range again and let's go back to our sphere collider this is kind of important guys because if you don't do this probably everything that you're doing is not gonna work so find out the is trigger option and make sure to have that check that's gonna allow us to actually being able to interact with those objects as well. So perfect, we have all the configuration set up. Make sure which is the button or the trigger for the grabbing functionality. Apparently it's the R touch or the L touch. If you don't know which ones are those, basically that's the trigger uh, that is available on the on the player on the controllers, on the Oculus controllers. So that's good guys, so let's go ahead and let's test this out and let's build this project. Great, so perfect, we're able to successfully create our scene here in our Oculus Quest. I'm just looking, taking a look of the environment. Now I'm just trying to be able to detect the, the objects and I don't know if you notice that after I pull the trigger, at the beginning it did not work. I'm pulling the trigger right now and it's not working. Remember we have a grab distance or max grab distance and at the moment we set it up to two. If I had set it up to a larger number, I probably would have been able to, to grab that, that suitcase. But since we defined it to two, that's why I'm not able to grab it from there, from that position. In order for me to grab it, I had to get closer to the object and then I pulled the trigger and I successfully grabbed that object. I'm gonna start testing it as well with other objects. Let's leave this suitcase back in this position. Uh, one more time. And I guess I don't like it. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna start testing other objects. Yep, telephone, got the pen. That's kind of cool. Look, I'm gonna write something. Perfect, our pen's working. Our frame, yep, that works as well. And then let's try one more time our cup. Let's make it a little bit more realistic. Let's, you know, have a drink of coffee here. But actually, we don't have anything. So we need to actually fill it up with anything. <laughs> but if you understand the concept or you were able to do this, congratulations. You learned how to include distance grabbing functionality in our Oculus Quest. And that's perfect. But if you notice, we have a whole office here. There's a lot of objects here that you could potentially interact with. So how, are the, how is the user gonna be able to detect which objects they can interact with or not? That's gonna be the next topic in the next section. Perfect, so we're able to successfully include our distance grabbing functionality. Now, the thing that is missing at the moment is the ability to detect which objects are grabbable or not. Let's go to our grab manager range. 
and let's go ahead and click it and if you notice there's gonna be within the grab manager script there's gonna be this outline color in range and outline color highlighted let's go ahead and change if though of these options let's start with the grab or the outline color in range and let's go ahead and change it to let's select white and <laughs> make sure as well that this is not transparent so go ahead and change it so it's visible as well literally it can take quite a bit of time if you can if you only detect that this whether it's transparent or not good now also a quick trick for you if you know when to determine where uh, a color is transparent or not let's change it back to transparent and let's close it and if you notice within here there's a little like underline that is that the color of the underline is, is black so that's kind of like a little bit helper if it's black it's gonna be transparent if it's white you notice so i move it it's changing to white it's all the way to white that means that the whole color is gonna be visible it's not gonna be transparent let's also change this outline color highlighted we can select any of the colors available here let's see which color we can pick let's pick this blue color yep blue aqua type of a color make sure that it's not transparent and perfect and that's first step i would like it to be simpler than that as well but that's one step one more time and you need another thing that needs to be included within our objects within any of the, our, our objects that we're going to interact with now the other part that we need to make sure that our objects that our grabbable objects have is that they have a specific material that has an outline an outline that is going to allow us to detect okay this is going to be a grabbing ob uh, a gravel object or not Really, we'll have to create a specific material that will have a shader, which will have an outline a color that will be able to manipulate and change the outline of that particular shader. And that's pretty much creating a script. So we're not going to go in there. We're going to cheat here and we're going to take advantage of what the Oculus Integration Toolkit has already. So what we're going to do is to go ahead and find, let's open this Oculus folder. And let's go ahead to the VR folder. Actually, the same, the sample framework. And let's find the usage folder. Then find the distance grab folder. There's a materials folder. And then you're going to find all of these materials available. Let's click on this bold 03 with outline. Uh, yep this that's the material available there what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy a new object you can do ctrl d to copy a new object a new material and then i'm gonna move this object from here and i'm gonna include it into our materials folder that we're gonna create in our project i had already created that folder so the only thing that is missing is to drag it and drop it there let's rename it to call it outline perfect and then the other thing that i want to remove from here is if you take a look at the inspector section it's got texture included i'm gonna double click on it not really not gonna open it i want to click on select and let's click on none good it's the first thing now you are also going to be able to see an outline width option this is not going to make sense at all for you unless we include that material to our suitcase so let's go ahead and drag it and drop it to our suitcase drag it and drop it now yes it did change your defaults objects objects color or material and that's fine that's just for demo purposes but in the future if you would like to make sure to keep your objects with a specific outline but with with your with your colors with your texture you need to be able to create a new material for that object 
But once again, we're cheating here. We're taking advantage of what is available for us already. So good. Now, if you take a look at these, the suitcase, our suitcase has an outline. It's got a specific outline available. And if we go back to our ad outline material, it's gonna increase the outline width. And as it says, you're gonna be able to increase the width of the outline within within the project, within within the object, within the suitcase. Good. So I'm just gonna make, make it a little bit dramatic here, a little bit more <laughs> too big of an outline. Usually you keep it sleek, but you know, good enough so the user can detect it. The outline is good, but I'm just gonna do it just so it's completely visible to you. Perfect. Uh, let's go ahead and include these to other objects. Yeah, I know it's gonna look a little bit weird on our objects if I change to all the way to white. So I'm gonna include this to the cup. Perfect. Let's include this to our pen. Good. Our telephone as well as our frame. Good. Now let's select each of these objects. And let's remember or take a look at the distance grabable script that we included to each of these components. If we double click or you open that distance grabable component, we're gonna see that there's a material color field. Now, we need to find out what's the field, what's the variable that changes the outline color of our material, of our object. How do we find that? Let's go back to our materials folder. Let's find the outline option. And in order to find that, we need to be able to see where, where is that, where is that happening? Where is the outline being, being included? If you go to the right section of the inspector, there's right left, in, right to the left of the gear icon, there's gonna be this option. Actually, not really. We're gonna go to a gear act, uh, icon and let's select it and we're gonna click on edit shader. If we click on edit shader, our IDE is gonna open. And if you're not very familiar with how this works, well, this is just a way to set up or to create this script for you to create a specific shader in the way you want. And just because I went already through this uh, script, basically the, the variable that we're gonna need to change the color of the outline is gonna be this. It's gonna be co called outline color or only scored outline color. So make sure you copy and paste it or you copy it first and we're gonna close our ID and it's gonna find our suitcase. Let's go to the distance grapple and let's go to our material color fill. Good, and let's gonna paste our variable that is called outline color. In a similar way, we're gonna have to do this process for each of the objects that we want the outline to change. So our pen, our telephone, let's go select the frame as well as the cap. Perfect. Now remember, this is not always gonna be the same variable. You have to create a specific shader that manipulates or that has a variable that changes the color or that has a variable that defines the color of the outline. So this is just cheating. Remember, we're using this material from the Oculus Innovation Toolkit just to speed up the process and also to show you how this works as well. So great. Now, now that we have this, Yes, you might be looking at this color, the blue, and this, this is by default the one that is included within the, the material. But the ones that are gonna be important for us are the ones that are gonna be detected or set up within our grab manager. Remember, we set up the range. If there are all objects within our range that we can detect, it's gonna be set to white. In fact, I'm gonna change it to a different color because the color of the that changes the color of the material changes the, the object's color to, to almost white. So let's go ahead and let's change it to green. 
yep let's select this green and we have our outline color highlighted to blue to aqua blue and that means that if we're pointing for example if we're pointing with our hands to our specific object that is grabbable and we're within the distance it's gonna change it to blue and it's gonna tell us like hey you're good to go we can grab this object and feel free to start or hitting the, the trigger button in order to pull this right so that should be all and let's go ahead and let's build this project so let's see what's the final output perfect guys so this is the final output if you quickly take a look i'm gonna stop a video real quick our objects have a green outline at the moment that means that there are objects that are in our range i'm gonna point out one of these objects a suitcase you took a look at that it changed the color to blue that means that it's available for me to grab that object and i just need to pull the trigger and then if i get away from detection yep it changes back to uh, white so that's good that's perfect look at it yep i'm gonna try with our objects let's see telephone let's see what else gonna get closer yep the pan works Brain works yep the cup works well, that's cool yeah i'm just gonna mess around here um perfect guys this was a success thank you for watching and i hope you were able to integrate distance grabbing functionality to your oculus quest project in unity if you like what you saw and it was pretty helpful for you please leave me a thumbs up as well as subscribe to my channel stay tuned for future videos about xr development in unity if you would like to learn a particular topic in xr development please please leave me a comment in the section below describing the things that you would like to see and learn in the future see you until the next time